Today, we celebrate the birth of the Christ. We know the Bible story well. Let's take a closer look, a metaphysical look at how the Christmas story takes on a deeper meaning for each of us. Now, metaphysical interpretation um, is basically where every person, place, or thing in a story represents different aspects of one individual consciousness. In other words, how does this story play out in you and play out in me? Let's see if we can recognize where we are on our spiritual journey. So Mary, the mother of Jesus, represents love. And our, it's our intuitive feeling nature. And at the higher level of consciousness, Mary represents divine love. Joseph represents the intellect. And at the upper level of higher consciousness, Joseph represents divine wisdom. So now, divine love and divine wisdom, Mary and Joseph, travel to Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread because it was located in an area where grain was harvested. And and what do you do to make bread? You get all the necessary ingredients, you mix it all together, you let it rest so that it can, what? Rise. Yes. I knew I'd get a rise out of you today. <laughs> so one of my minister friends say, how did your service go? I said, oh, I got a rise out of them. <laughs> so rise. So met metaphysically, Bethlehem represents that rising in consciousness to a higher realm of being. I always thought it was interesting that when Joseph and Mary, divine love and divine wisdom, arrive at this higher realm of being, there's no room for them at the end. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> well, what the inn represents old patterns, old belief systems that resist this new level of consciousness. The innkeeper is the voice of the old belief system that says, no, there's no room for you here. The inn's full. You see, our old beliefs or patterns must be released in order for something new to arise. The rising in consciousness is a birth, so to speak, into a higher realm of being, the Christ consciousness. And our old stubborn beliefs don't always cooperate easily in making the shift. However, the birth of the Christ presence will not be denied. Even the old pattern, the old belief system recognizes this. And a tiny crack of compassion um, from the innkeeper offers divine love and divine wisdom, Mary and Joseph, a place to stay in the humble stable out back. The bright star represents the illumination of one's consciousness. The awakening that something pretty amazing is happening. The three wise men represent our higher consciousness thoughts. And they come bearing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The higher consciousness thoughts tap into a greater realm of knowing beyond what our current level of consciousness can access. These three wise men represent intellect, wisdom, and intuition. And when the three come together, they are elevated to a consciousness of divine intelligence, divine wisdom, and divine knowing. And this is evidenced by the gifts that they brought, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In biblical times, gold was reserved for kings. Frankincense was was reserved for priests, and myrrh was reserved for one who was dying. You see, the three wise men, divine intelligence, divine wisdom, and divine knowing, already knew the incredible journey ahead for the special child. Their gifts secretly said, we acknowledge this child as the king of kings. We acknowledge this child as one with high spiritual understanding. And we acknowledge this child as one who will give his life for our benefit. 
the shepherds were drawn to the special occasion as well. You know, shepherds spend all night in the field, keeping an eye out on their flock, protecting them. And they're aware of the night sky and any unusual occurrences. So when they received that message from the angel and they saw the star shining so bright, they knew it was a sign that they had to follow and it led them to the birth of the Christ. So the shepherds represent the youthful innocence of everyday man and that the birth of the Christ is for everyone from shepherds to kings. No one is left out. Hmm. I am the joy of God in expression. Let's say that together. I am the joy of God in expression. Thank you. Where are we on our spiritual journey to give birth to the Christ within? You and I are children of God, heirs to God's kingdom of good. You know, the wisdom that Jesus tapped into that Christ consciousness, it's available to each and every one of us. It's right here, waiting to be birthed into expression moment by moment. Jesus said, do you not know that you are gods? You are an expression of the divine. Jesus said, what I do, you shall do, and greater still, if what? Believe. If you believe, thank you. The Christmas story is our story too. And it's a glimpse of what Jesus came here to teach us. Remember the definition of the names Jesus and Christ. Jesus is the name of the man who lived over 2,000 years ago. Christ was not his last name. Christ is the name of the spark of the divine that lives in each one of us, waiting to be found and fanned into a flame. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus, the man, found that spark within, fanned it into a flame, and moved and lived and moved and had his being immersed in the Christ presence. When we truly get that we are beloveds of the divine and we rise in consciousness to that level of Christ consciousness as Jesus did, that, my friend will be the second coming of Christ. When we allow the birth of the Christ's presence within us. You could say it's like being born again or born anew in the spirit of Christ. You might remember um, in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, a Pharisee named Nicodemus came in the cover of night secretly to see Jesus. And he said, Jesus, Rabbi, Roboni, that was um, acknowledging Jesus as a great teacher from God. Nicodemus wanted to know, how, how could you do these great miraculous things? Surely you must be connected to God. Please tell me how. And Jesus replied, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. Nicodemus said, how can one be born when they've already grown old? Can, what, can one enter again into their mother's womb and be born again? Jesus said, no. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. So several religions take this to mean being baptized with water. But that's not what he said. He said, no one can enter the kingdom of, kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. This is where the two become one. What is born of water is the flesh, our human body. We're made up of mostly water. And what is born of spirit is spirit. In other words, what, what is born of God is an expression of God. Jesus said, do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born again. Flesh is flesh, born of water, but born of spirit is from on high. And he's referring to the Christ, the spark of the divine fanned into a flame. That, my friend, is being born again, born anew of water and spirit. 
In summary, the Christmas story is our story as we rise in consciousness. It's like we are being born again, born anew. Old patterns and belief systems give way to something new and better. Born anew is the birthing of the Christ of our being. May we enjoy the gifts of divine love and divine wisdom as we rise in consciousness and begin living from our Christhood. I am the joy of God in expression. Together, I am the joy of God in expression. Thank you, God. Remember the birth of the Christ is the reason for the season. Shine your bright Christ light, beloved, and be the magnificent expression of God that you are. Shine, shine, shine. God is good. All the time. Thank you. So let's take all this love and light and joy and wisdom with us as we prepare for meditation. I invite you to get comfortable right where you are. Relax your body. Relax your shoulders. Let the chair support you and feel your feet on the floor. Close your eyes if you'd like. And just be here now. As we sing, as I center in love, I align with God. As I center in love, I align with God. As I center in love, I align with God. As I center in love. I center in love, I align with God. I invite you to let go of any outer distractions and focus within. Gently breathe in, God is. Slowly breathe out, I am. God is. I am. I invite you to allow my words to be the words of your own heart and mind as we share this brief time of prayer and meditation together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this day and this opportunity to be alive in it. Thank you for faith peace, love, and joy. Thank you, God, for the spiritual community and all those that attend. For we know that where two or more are gathered in your name, you are here in the midst of us, always present. Thank you, God, for this holiday season to remind us of the truth of who we are as beloveds of the divine and that we can rise in consciousness any time that we choose and see from a new perspective 
and align with divine intelligence and divine wisdom and divine intuition and receive divine guidance on what is ours to do. Thank you, God, for reminding us to choose daily to give birth to the Christ presence within and rise in consciousness and be the love and light of God in expression. I invite you to take another gentle breath in. Slowly release it. And I invite you to go deep within to that sacred place within you where you connect with the divine presence of God. And just rest there and listen for the still small voice of God to speak just to you in the silence, in the silence. I am as God created me in the love, in the light, in the joy, in the glory. Today and every day, I rise and give birth to the Christ presence within me. And I walk, move, and have my being in the Christ consciousness. And I am grateful. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. are blessed, aren't we? Woo! Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you. All right. It's in the stillness that we remember who we are. Remember, remember. Before we move into our candle lighting ceremony, we're going to take this time to share of our abundance, remembering that God is our source and our supply, and that Unity Church for Creative Living is our spiritual home that we love and financially support. So we are open and receptive to receiving, and there are many ways that you can give um, to UCCL. We're going to pass the basket. Um, you can also give on our website at unityandjack.com, our Facebook page, the Tidely app, or if you want to use a credit card, you can see Helen in the lobby after service. And we do still accept checks in the mail. <laughs> now I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward. I'm going to 
invite you to take the gift that you have to share and fill it with the love that you have in your heart as we affirm together our offertory blessing. Together, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am richly blessed. Thank you, God. So it is. Thank you. So next Sunday, New Year's Eve, and we will be holding our special burning bowl service here at 10.30 a.m. on December 31st. The burning bowl ceremony is a sacred ceremony of just releasing and letting go of what does not serve us. And then once we let that go, we move into a visioning process for what we desire for the new year. I invite you to join us for this very special service next Sunday, December 31st, 10.30 a.m. And beginning the new year, as usual, the first Sunday of the new year, um, we will be having our white stone ceremony for that morning service. We invite you to join us for that because great things are in store for 2024. Say that with me. Great things are in store for 2024. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.